Hello everyone again, this is Dr. Fatima Qureshi and we're going to continue the discussion about why is it so important to get your eyes dilated when you come in for your routine um, examinations, yearly checkups, routine eye exams, or even if you come in for an emergency. If you come in for an emergency and you have decrease in vision or your uh, vision is foggy or blurry or you're seeing flashes of lights, you're seeing floaters, tiny dots in the field of view, or you're seeing a black curtain or shadow in the field of view, we got to dilate you okay just remember that it's not for us it's for you it's going to be beneficial for you um, because if I don't dilate you I'm not going to see anything in your retina a and B even if you get the fundus photo taken there's a chance that there may be something way in the periphery that can only be seen with a with the 78 lens or a 90 diopters lens or even uh, with an indirect uh, BIO uh, that I can examine your retina with and check for any kind of lesions or um, retinal detachments or retinal tears and so on and so forth. So I'm going to talk about the Optus map today because a lot of times patients say, well, at least if I don't want to be dilated, maybe they didn't bring in a driver like I discussed in the previous video. They don't have a driver, but I have to check their retina. So then the next best, best thing is to do an Optus map, which is a fundus camera that we have in our office. It takes amazing pictures. I've diagnosed so many things uh, with this Optus map and I'm going to I'm going to talk about it and show you some pictures right now okay so uh, let's look at the computer right now this is the opto map and uh, this is the diagnostic atlas that I'm showing you right now I'm going to talk about some of the commonly seen things so I'm going to pin I'm going to point it for you so for instance a patient comes in with um, these are of course not going to happen in one person but these are just some of the examples that we can detect and diagnose in uh, some patients with the help of this um, OptoMap or the fundus camera that we have in our office. So if a patient comes in with decrease in vision, sudden onset loss in vision in one eye, painless, and um, I look at the retina and I'm looking at uh, a dilated exam, it obviously will, will be the best option and the best scenario, but in case we don't have that because the patient does not want to be dilated or for whatever rhyme or reason, this fundus camera can show me this thing here. If you look at this one right there, this is a cholesterol embolus. This comes from a thrombus that turns into an embolus and here in the retinal artery, you can see that embolus right there. And this can cause a major loss in vision, sudden onset. I have seen this, as a matter of fact, I see a lot of these and this is the embolus that can travel to the brain and cause a stroke. And then I have to send these patients for um, a complete stroke workup, carotid artery Doppler ultrasound in the neck, and then maybe if the hospital wants to do an endarterectomy. And I get calls from the ER a lot uh, talking about, oh, thank you for referring the patient, they admit the patient. So right there you can see is the cholesterol embolus right there. Okay, then another thing that I see through the OptiMap, which is very important, is this one here. It says asteroid hyalosis right there, asteroid hyalosis. If you look at my pen, this is tiny, tiny depositions of calcium in the retina. And it doesn't, it does not necessarily cause loss in vision or decrease in vision, but you can see the view is going to be very, very blurry. So this is asteroid hyalosis. Then I have to ask them to get their blood calcium levels checked, parathyroid hormone levels checked, and so on and so forth. Um, then we come to vitreous hemorrhage. If you look at this one here in this area, the vitreous hemorrhage is very, very commonly seen. And we need to document these things. So if you don't have a picture, you, you, I mean, as a, as a doctor, I can see these things, but if I don't have a picture of it, I cannot show it to my patients. The other doctor, if someone wants to uh, see this patient again the second time, they wouldn't know where exactly is the, is the vitreous hemorrhage. But if there's a picture, it's going to be very beneficial uh, for the records also. And we can show it to the patient. So this is the vitreous hemorrhage. This is where the vitreous or the fluid in the back part of the eye and the retina is going to have some bleeding going on. You can see right here, this is where the bleeding is happening. Um, then commonly seen is a choroidal nevus. If you look right there, this is the choroidal nevus here. And this is a benign uh, benign mole or freckle as we call it in layman's term to the patients this is where we look at and then we have to document it if you don't have a picture we cannot even see how big it is 
What's the size? If it's changing in size, is it changing in its margins? If they are defined, irregular, elevated, flat, what's the, what's, what, what, if there's any pigment on the colloidal nevus, what's the color of the nevus, and uh, you know, those kind of things. So we have to document it with the help of a picture right there. A commonly seen thing is the floater. If you look at my pen when I'm pointing, this is the floater. Patients talk about it all the time. They ask me this question on my blog also. Um, you know, I see these floaters, uh, they could be like web, tiny cow, um, uh, like uh, spider webs, uh, they could be like uh, flies, they could be like anything, uh, like threads also. Usually they describe it as black in color and this is the floater. Again, this is because of the fluid, which is the vitreous in this area that gets liquefied, it's supposed to be thick gel-like consistency, but if it gets liquefied, you can see these floaters. Then here's another important one that I see, the retinal hole. And as you can see, if the pupil was not dilated, just look at this, I wouldn't be able to see all these things, right? The pupil is tiny. I will probably just be able to see this part, which is the optic nerve, but after that, I wouldn't be able to see anything. So th these things can happen in the way peripheral part also. So if you look at this, this is the retinal hole, and uh, this needs um, a consultation with the retina specialist. Then we can see a more serious condition, which is a choroidal melanoma. This is a large area, and this is definitely more malignant, and we have to refer this out to the retina specialist also. You see the drusen here, commonly seen, scattered drusen, or you can see it in the macula. This is the macula where the rays of light focus. If you see drusen in this area, that's or macular degeneration, then you have to figure out if it's dry versus wet. You have to do OCT and so many other things on that, and there's treatment for that too. If you look here, this is a classic area of the drusen. Here's another very classic one, which is the bear tracks, which is known as Sharpie, choroid hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium. It, it literally looks like tracks, bear tracks, uh, tracks of a bear's feet. Like, you know, you can see these. And it looks very, very dramatic when you're looking at the fundus. Um, I show it to my staff and they they get very fascinated with these things. Um, then you can see the artery. Here's the cotton wool spot, like right there, and you can see that usually in hypertensive retinopathy. This is the artery, here's the vein, this is the choroidal nevus I talked about. Oh, and then this one that I've talked about in one of my videos is the retinitis pigmentosa, bony spicules or bone spicules. You can see that in night blindness cases. Again, it's very important to show the patient and also for your own um, documentation, like I said, you have to see the pro prognosis and the progress, so you definitely need to have these pictures taken. This is another one, mic without pressure. Not, not that important for you guys, but more important for us as physicians positions as doctors to figure out if this area in the way peripheral, and again, these happen in the way peripheral part of the retina. There's no way we can check that without an undilated pupil. But again, if the pupil is not even dilated, you can get a pretty good view. These pictures are awesome because even if the patient is not dilated, you can still see these things uh, with our optil nav. Um, retinoschisis right here, if you look, separation of the retina. And then this is the most important, I would say, in my opinion, the retinal detachment. Again, you will most likely, you will see the retinal detachments in the little peripheral part of the retina. So this is the detachment of the retina. This requires emergency referral to a retina specialist. Like, like you don't even wait for this one. Um, so I think I covered most of the important things here. And um, the take home message again, and then here's the retinal hemorrhages right here. I don't want to miss that one here. Um, these are important also uh, to be referred out. So basically the take home message is um, listen to your doctors. We, we are telling you to do these things. Again, it's important for you, it's not for us. It's going to help you in your recovery, in your diagnosis, in the treatment plan, and so on and so forth. So again, um, be, come, come to your eye doctors, uh, to your eye specialist, get your dilated exams, get the photos taken. Very important. If you get the dilation, get the photo taken as well. It's, it's not going to hurt you. It's just going to be more beneficial for everyone, not just for the physicians, but also for um, for you guys um, as patients. So keep watching my channel, uh, keep subscribing. It's very important that you subscribe so that you can see all the videos, upcoming videos. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and happy Thanksgiving. Bye.